hello boys welcome back to another session of video tutorials and this session is meant for class 12th biology students and this is meant for 8th december 2020 as all of us know we are into the revision mode we are revising the entire syllabus after having completed the videos entirely and now we are focusing on each chapter with the revision notes and as part of it we have been discussing and reflecting upon chapter number 15 biodiversity and its conservation so in that in our previous session we were talking about patterns of biodiversity and in that we talked about latitudinal gradients in which we were talking about the diversity of plants and animals Uh, is not uniform throughout the world but shows a rather uneven distribution for many group of animals or plants there are interesting patterns of uh, diversity the most well known being the latitudinal gradient in diversity in general species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles with very few exceptions tropics latitudinal range of 23.5 degrees north to 23.5 degrees south harbor more species than temperate or polar areas colombia located near the equator has nearly 14000 species of birds while new york at 41 degrees north has 105 species and greenland at 71 degrees north has only 56 species india with much of its land area in the tropical latitudes has more than 1200 species of birds a forest in a tropical region has up to 10 times as many species of vascular plants as a forest of equal area in temperate region like midwest of USA the largely tropical amazon rainforest in south america has the greatest biodiversity on earth it's home to more than as i said 40000 species of plants 3000 species of fishes 1300 varieties of birds 427 species of mammals 427 of amphibians 378 of reptiles and more than 125000 invertebrates that's the diversity in amazon rainforest scientists estimate that in these rainforests there might be at least 2 million insect species waiting to be discovered and named ecologists and evolutionary biologists have proposed various hypotheses for greater biodiversity in tropics some of the important ones as we discussed yesterday are speciation speciation is generally a function of time unlike temperate regions subjected to frequent glaciations in the past tropical latitudes have remained relatively undisturbed for years and thus had long evolutionary time for species diversification and second we talked about the tropical environments unlike temperate ones are less seasonal relatively more constant and predictable such constant environments promote i said niche specialization so that is the niche specialization and lead to greater species diversity and third point we were talking about is there is more solar energy available in the tropics and uh, that contribute to higher productivity thus in turn contribute indirectly to greater diversity so with that in our background let's move on to the species area relationship and this can be graphically represented in this fashion as you are seeing on x axis we are calculating the area on y axis we are seeing the species richness how rich the species are present in the given area and you are prominently seeing a straight line going up a red line and uh, you are seeing a parabola 
of a pink line or uh, say bluish line, sky blue line. Uh, we must be thankful to a great scientist, Alexander Van Humboldt has observed that within a region, species richness gets increased when explored area is increased, but only up to a limit. That means vast the area, species richness also will be increased. But then that has got a limitation. Only up to certain limit, the species richness will be there. As you are seeing here, this relationship between species richness and area for a number of taxa like angiospermic plants, freshwater fishes and birds is found to be rectangular hyperbola as you are seeing here. So on a log scale, the relationship is a straight line described by the equation log s is equal to log c plus z log a as you are seeing here where S represents species, A represents area, Z represents the slope of the line and C is equal to Y intersection. So it is the Y intercept C. That means the German naturalist and geographer Alexander Van Humboldt proposed that the species richness increases with increasing area but up to a certain limit. So this relationship between species richness and area turned, turned out to be rectangular hyperbola for a wide variety of taxa. So value of Z lies, you can see the value of Z lies generally in the range of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 irrespective of the taxonomic group or reason with the exception of large areas like continents where the value of Z is in the range of 0 0.6 to 1.2, that is the richness. So what is the importance of this species diversity to an ecosystem? So the importance of species diversity to the ecosystem is enormous. Uh, it, uh, the maintenance of biodiversity is important uh, because of the reasons given. That is one, ecological stability. Species diversity provides stability to the ecosystem. The more diverse an ecosystem, the better it can withstand environmental stress. That is the most important thing. In ecosystem with high species diversity, alien species are unable to establish themselves and destruction of part of ecosystem does not degrade. That means overall the ecosystem will flourish. That's why we say ecological stability is the first one. And second, of course, wherever species richness is there, there will be productivity. So second point is productivity. Ecosystems with higher biodiversity are more productive than those with lower biodiversity. And third, ecosystem health. Biodiversity provides various checks, controls, negative as well as positive feedbacks and it also provides critical links and keystone species. All the species are interlinked through various types of relationship as we are seeing through food chain and food webs. So ecosystem health will be flourishing when the species richness is high. And then of course we have got a very famous hypothesis it is called rivet Popper hypothesis. Now, this was proposed by Stanford ecologist Paul Ehrlich. Paul Ehrlich. It is an analogy, means it's a comparison. In an aeroplane, that is ecosystem, all parts are joined together using thousands of rivets. Here, rivets is comparable to species. If every passenger traveling in it starts popping a rivet to make home, causing a species to become extinct, it may not affect flight safety, that is proper functioning of the ecosystem initially. But as more and more rivets are removed, the plane becomes dangerously weak over a period of time. Furthermore, which rivet is removed may also be critical. 
this is important so loss of rivets on the wings that is the key species that drive major ecosystem functions is obviously more serious threat to flight safety than loss of a few rivets on the seats or windows inside the plane so this is how he has compared that is if selectively species are removed out of an ecosystem the whole biodiversity gets disturbed and then once the species are out of the ecosystem ecosystem will not exist anymore that is the importance of this now loss of biodiversity if we remove keep on removing the species in this fashion from every ecosystem so that the biodiversity itself will become a question mark so the biological wealth of our planets have been declining rapidly due to three factors one is population of course population explosion urbanization industrialization these are the three culprits that are having a larger impact negative impact on any bio uh, diversity or any any ecosystem the iucn red list that is international union for conservation of nature and natural resources it has made a red list in 2004 documents the extinction of look at that 784 species that includes 338 vertebrates 359 invertebrates and 87 plants in the last 500 years some examples of recent extinctions include the dodo from mauritius quagga from africa and thylacin from australia stellar sea cow from russia and three species bali javan and caspian of tigers in the last 20 years 27 species have been disappeared in general loss of biodiversity in the region or in any region may lead to decline in plant production lowered resistance to environmental perturbations drought and flood increased variability in ecosystem processes such as productivity water use and pest and disease cycles so it's a biological wealth that we are losing from our planet and it has been declining rapidly due to whom due to our own human activities the colonization of tropical pacific islands by humans is led to extinction of more than 2000 species of native birds and the iucn red list documents the extinction of 784 species and uh, from various uh, reasons as we said in the last 500 years and then last 20 years alone we have witnessed the disappearance of 27 species 20 years 27 species and careful analysis of record show that extinction across taxa are not random some groups like amphibians appear to be more vulnerable to extinction adding to the grim scenario of extinctions is the fact that more than 15500 species worldwide are facing the threat of extinction means they are in the endangered list presently 12% of all bird species 23% of all mammal species 32% of all amphibian species and 31% of all gymnosperm species in the world face the threat of extinction during the long period since the origin on diversification of life on the earth there were five episodes of mass extinction of species the current species extinction rates are estimated to be 100 to 1000 times i repeat 100 to 1000 times faster than in the pre human times and our activities are responsible for this fastest rate ecologists warn that if the present trends continue nearly half of all the species on the earth might be wiped out within the next 100 years so this is a wake up call for us all these data which i have given to you must make us aware that we always have the principle in our minds 